worst thing for me about being a strong man is the fact that I can never get any clothes to fit. That's, that's probably the hardest thing. Everybody wants to know how much you bench or what's the heaviest thing you've lifted. You know, you've always got to answer those sort of stupid questions. Not being able to have fun. <laughs> for me, I don't know. I don't think there's any worst thing about strong for me. You know, because it's, it's, it's really nice. I love it. The best thing is um, being able to eat quite a bit of food, and I think sometimes that's the worst thing too, is having to eat so much food. <sighs> best thing about being a strong man? It's the drive you get when you train for something for months, and then uh, when you finally succeed. Let's have it. Adrenalina sięgająca z Nitu i dobra walka. Traveling around the world, that's brilliant. Getting to see everything and, and meeting a good bunch of guys. Being able to say I can lift things that most people can't. <laughs> London's Heathrow Airport was shaken to its foundations as strong men from around Europe gathered ahead of this year's World's Strongest Man competition. Over the last 30 years, countries such as Zambia, Iceland, Mauritius, Malaysia, Morocco and China have played host. This year, the competition was returning to the location of the very first tournament, California, USA. Qualification is based on placings at the World's Strongest Man Super Series events and a number of wildcard entrants. In all, 25 contestants do battle across five heats. The top two in each group go through to the final. The effort and intensity required from the athletes meant that strict medical supervision was paramount. Athletes have to satisfy the event doctor of their suitability to withstand the event. 138.85. That's good. Is that? That's very good. That's plumb normal. Better than mine. Absolutely normal ECG. Good. It's not too bad. Just need a bit of um, breaking down, yeah? Mm hmm Good. <laughs> Huge muscles need a lot of attention, so after the medical, the strong men took time to relax and unwind from the long journey. Central in that process was the on-site massage therapist. But lifting cars and flipping 400 kilogram tires good, takes its toll on even the strongest bodies. Being the reigning world's strongest man doesn't make you an exception to that rule. About a week and a half before the competition <laughs> begins, I did a deadlift workout that really, really banged me up. But I was able to get some good uh, physiotherapy uh, immediately afterwards for a couple of days, so it responded very quickly. So, and we're still working through that, but I think it'll be just fine. England's two debutantes were Jimmy Marku and Mark Westerby. I don't know if I like America either. Why not? I don't know. Mm. I, I, no, I would love America. I suppose it's really unfair, fair, but I don't know, really. It's, it's, it's just, just massive and flat. And, uh, no, I'm scared of them all. <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping to turn it round so they fear me a little bit as well. So after the first event, We'll see. Cheers, Chef. Then it was time to practice. The equipment manager is two times world's strongest man, Yoka Ahola. This is first time when we are having this in this competition, and we weren't sure if it's uh, heavy enough. And when the boys came here, they walked walked with these uh, with these like uh, with empty barrels. So we had to put uh, 10 kilos more to this barrel and 20 kilos more to that barrel. So the total now is 110 kilos here, 120 kilos there. So we'll see soon. The familiarization session is a crucial part of the competitors' preparation, as some of them haven't seen particular events before. The modern strongman needs more than just power. Agility and endurance are vital. Regardless of how much he trains in the gym, an athlete never really knows whether he'll master the event until he tries it for real. I'm pretty happy with everything. I was a little bit concerned about the kick toss, just purely because I was so bad at it last year, but I am. Um... Practiced it a hell of a lot coming up to this. Didn't actually know whether I'd get it or not, but I thought I'd practice it anyway, and it seems to have paid off quite well. The people who haven't done this so much, they, first of all, they need the chance to, to practice on the events, and also uh, some people try to show off a bit. And I don't really care. <laughs> you know, uh, everybody's world champion until the contest starts, and then usually, usually the same old names pops out anyway. 
With less than 24 hours to go before battle begins, final preparations are in full swing. Now all the competitors have to do is conquer the pre-match nerves. Day one of the qualification rounds for the World's Strongest Man 2007 and the athletes were up early in the sunshine of Anaheim, Southern California. And our strongmen had to deal with the age-old paradox, getting yourself psyched up while trying to stay calm. Very nervous, very nervous this morning. But uh, my head's clearing all the time, you know, so get this first event out of the way and I'll be fine, absolutely fine. Sleep again tonight. <laughs> How did you sleep last night? Terrible. <clears throat> just going through all the events. I don't know why you do it, but that's just, it just, I suppose it's just natural, isn't it? Um, your mind won't let you rest. So, uh, we'll see. I was a bit nervous last night, didn't sleep too well, but uh, just part and parcel of it, you get used to it, I suppose. But yeah, I feel okay body-wise, but uh, belly's doing backflips and so is my head, but I'll be all right. The qualification heats for the World's Strongest Man final would take place over four days of gruelling competition. The first event's always, always the worst. You know, you feel much better after you get that one over with, so you can either be upset for not doing well or either be happy for doing well. So. And the last event's always... The favourite, because then it's over after that one. And you can go on with life. <laughs> In the 2006 final, Phil Fister pulled off an amazing comeback to put himself within half a point of the champion Marius Pudzianowski with just one event to go. Usually an athlete has a very good sense about what his chances really are. And I knew last year that, that I was ready for a big fight and that my chances were good, you know, that I had a real chance to win. I tried not to concentrate too much on the final outcome, uh, but only just to try to do my best in each event. And I'd known that I'd prepared as best I could, and I knew that I'd go out and do my best. And so I you know, kind of resigned myself to no matter how it ended up, I, I'd be fine. And it was just a huge relief when I, when I finally did win. Yeah! 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 I put a lot of pressure on myself. I told myself earlier in the year that, that this was going to be my year to make a big push. And if things didn't go well, I'd, I'd be done with the sport. So things went well and I'm back again. Back in 2001 in Zambia, Fister made a bold promise that he'd be the man to bring the title back to the US. He kept his promise and in 2006 became the first American since Bill Kazmaier, 24 years earlier, to win the sport's ultimate prize. But despite his obsession, he's learned to keep a balance. It is a daily lifestyle, but, but there's plenty of room and time, you know, to be a well-rounded person and to have more in your life than just strength. Uh, especially if you look at it from a long-term view, which is really, in my view, the only way to look at it. But um, it takes a lot of work, and it's, it's very tough just to eat the calories you need if you're going to be over 300 pounds and healthy. Um, that in itself is a job. Phil Fister is really a unique individual and could be that enigma. He is somebody that is really, really special. Uh, I've watched him over 10 years, and the first time I ever saw him compete, I just couldn't believe the kind of performance that he put forth. Not only his athleticism, but his ability to bring out his very best in events that he probably shouldn't have done very well at. And over these 10 years, he's excelled and become a very complete strongman as far as his ability in the events. It's the real deal. A dedicated family man, Fister works as a firefighter in West Virginia, though since his victory, he's been released from active duty. Despite being six foot six and weighing around 25 stone, he knows that dynamism and flexibility are key skills if he's going to keep the title another year. Strongman is a very, very dynamic sport, and anything can happen and will happen in strongman. And um, it's a very technical sport as well. People don't realize um, how technically proficient the top guys are in each of the events, um, combined with the conditioning and the athleticism and the strength. So it really takes a, 
a total package of consistency to do well in strongman, especially year after year. Day two, Elvis Nicotuli. For some of the athletes, the first event had gone very well. I just wanted to finish a duck walk, not get too ahead of myself, not go too crazy, because I knew that the event would be won or, won or lost on the barrels. But I sort of saw them starting to get behind me and thought, well, I'm, I can go faster than this and I can lead this, get a good lead going into the, the barrels, but just went a bit crazy and dropped it. I managed to still be in the lead and finish the two barrels. Didn't do as well on the second as I hoped because I've cut my finger open, but no, I'm pretty happy with the win. Uh, you know, I'm happy, but obviously I wanted first place um, because I have some really good competitors in this group and it's going to be extremely difficult. So, you know, the better I do earlier on, the better it's going to help me later on. And, uh, you know, I had the lead at one point going into the last barrel and it's just I wasn't strong enough to hold on to it, so Mark took advantage of that and ended up beating me, but overall I'm happy. You know, one more event today and then I get to rest for a little bit, so good start. Usually the first event always the most difficult one for me. I'm getting it out of the way now. I'm very pleased. You know, I win it. Um, the first, the dog walk surprised me a bit, you know, because I got the same way Duck Walk Home and it's also wild. But um, this one is just a bit um, harder because the handle is so wide and you have to put your legs a lot more wide. So, But I finished it and I'm pleased. Yeah. One down, three more torturous days to go in the qualifying session. Jesse Morunde, one of the most successful contemporary American strongmen. The man from Ohio finished runner-up in 2005 and was due to mount an all-out assault on the title two years later. Tragically, on July 25th, aged just 27, Morunde died while training. It was later found that he had suffered from a genetically enlarged heart. Morunde was married to Callie, who gave birth to the couple's first child, a daughter Jessica, barely a month before his passing. Uh, I was uh, 17 years old. I had just won uh, the U.S. Strongest Team competition, and I got invited to go work at a pro competition, just kind of helping out, moving the stones, and, you know, just being around the athletes. And uh, I remember, I didn't know anyone. I remember Jesse came straight up to me, you know, put his arm around me. He was like, hey, I'm Jesse, what's your name? And, you know, introduced me to everyone, and just like, you know, and I remember watching him competing. He's standing on one leg, and playing with the crowd and just and it was like, you know, that's what I want to be, you know, like that's what I want to be like. At 19, Kevin Nee became the youngest athlete ever to compete at the World's Strongest Man. He had won the title of America's Strongest Teen a year before, attracting a fair share of media attention. Now 22, the man from Massachusetts remains in demand. MTV called me up one morning and was, hey, you know, we're doing the show called True Life. It's a documentary series, and we'd like to, you know, follow you around, and see how you prepare to try to become a heavyweight pro. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Even though at first I thought it was a prank. You know, I thought it was one of my friends calling me because it was like seven in the morning. At the time, I was working at a nightclub, and they called me, and I was like, yeah, this is MTV calling. I'm like, Leo, shut up, man. It's like we don't know who Leo is. I'm like, oh, all right, my bad. So uh, it was kind of a funny story how that happened. But uh, yeah, they just called me up and asked me if I wanted to do it. And I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. As one of Men's Fitness Magazine's 25 fittest men in the world, Knee is an example for all the athletes. The list is comprised of those who over the past year have harnessed the physical and mental stamina needed to beat the odds, overcome obstacles and set personal bests in order to elevate their game to the next level. This summer was pretty tough. I've lost three friends this summer and the uh, car was stolen and uh, Ed broke up with the girl that I was in love with, you know. I was living with her, so it was like all this happened while I'm training for this competition. So obviously th there's nothing you can do about that though, that's life, things are gonna happen.
He is now a top-ranked competitor in the World's Strongest Man competition, and the great Marius Pudzianowski has referred to him as the next. And that's why I love the sport. The camaraderie is unbelievable, and uh, the other guys definitely do give me good advice. I mean, they mess with my head a little bit too because I'm the youngest, but uh, no, they definitely uh, help me out and give me some advice, and you know, try to coach me through as we go along. And you know, I really appreciate that. I really do. And uh, it's that's what what makes this sport so special. Is you know, you'll be you know going up against one of your biggest competitors, or you know, someone that you're really you know, head to head with, but yet they're giving you advice before you go out there. So it's, no other sport is like this. As the competition picked up momentum, the strange array of events started to pick out the weak spots in the competitors. This is a very bad event for me, and uh, that's why I'm very angry. I lost good events, uh, point, and now I'm gonna lose maybe more points and makes my uh, situation more difficult. The Fingal's fingers weigh between two and 300 kilos, with the final steel bar the equivalent of lifting two 750cc motorbikes. And that's what Strongman's all about. A bit disappointed with my um, second place. I was hoping to win on that. I pretty much matched my time at the Britons that I did. Made a couple of really big mistakes. So hopefully, if I make the final, I can do a good time there and like get rid of the mistakes and put in a good time. I think I'm good for maybe 35, 36 seconds. Mark Felix from England had his son providing TLC and his wife recording his performances. At the end of day two, Phil Fister looked as relaxed as a tourist on holiday. The fetching bag added to his look. The Queen Mary would provide the backdrop for day three of the qualifiers. The competition was hotting up for cast and crew. In 1998, Sweden's Magnus Samuelsson experienced the ecstasy of victory. But in the 2006 contest, the 36-year-old ruptured a disc in his lower back. We didn't realize how bad this was, me and my doctor. We thought it was just a small bulking disc. So we managed to get the symptoms kind of symptom-free before the contest. And I, in the gym, I felt really strong. But of course, uh, as soon as pretty much the contest started, the, the disc went out again and even worse than before. So the whole... Uh, whole autumn up, up to Christmas were uh, just uh, horrible. And after that, it slowly become better and better. And uh, in the end, I'll be competing flat out and I've done really well. So uh, I know I can do. It still affects me a bit, but uh, I know it, would, it will hold. Standing a mighty two meters tall, Magnus Samuelsson holds the record for reaching the finals of World's Strongest Man nine times. A feat which he achieved over a 10-year span from 1995 to 2004. After a long and successful career, last year was supposed to be his swan song. The master plan for last year was to go there, win it all and just say bye-bye to everybody. But it uh, uh, didn't happen. And uh, for myself, it's, it's a combination of reasons why I do this. First of all, it's my job. I have a, a number of companies supporting me. I do jobs for them, so this is... Uh, this is not my hobby, this is uh, what I do as, uh, as a full-time professional. I'm not going to say this is my last World Strongest Man either. It probably, it probably is, but um, if I for some reason can find uh, motivation and inspiration for, to, to, for next year, I will probably be here again. But uh, th that's the beauty of it all. I don't have the pressure on myself anymore. As long as I'm enjoying this, I will, I will hang on with it. And if I find something more interesting to do, I will do that instead. Blonde and blue-eyed, Magnus is as close to the image of a Viking as he can possibly get. His striking looks turns heads wherever he goes. For some time, there's been another factor contributing to his success. It's his wife, Kristen. You need to have a good team around you to be a good strongman athlete. It's just, of course, it's his performance, but the, the whole team, I am important for him. Together we are strong, you can say. 
Kristen is no stranger to the sport. She's a former two-time winner of Sweden's Strongest Woman, and it's that experience and teamwork that has helped Magnus achieve a podium place on five separate occasions. The privilege of being here so many times is that we know that it's, it's not going to work out how much you calculate anyway. It's going to come down to a fight, and I'm pretty good on relaxing between fights. So uh, I somehow I'm pretty convinced somehow I will make the final, even though it's going to be going to be down to the last event. One of the true warriors of the sport, Samuelsson was back to his best in the 2007 contest, and as the day drew to a close, he and the rest of the athletes took the time to reflect on the gruelling day's events. Day three of the qualifiers for the world's strongest man and a trip to Huntingdon Beach was in store for the athletes. However, 10 miles away, the television crew were facing some heavyweight obstacles. Local laws dictated that a solid walkway be constructed across the sand to the site of the event. Unfortunately, the local council refused to provide a permit to build one. Back at the hotel, the athletes waited and waited. The only distractions were autograph hunters and young fans, desperate for a memento. Hard work helped pass the time for the television crew, but for the athletes, the delay meant starting mental preparations all over again. It just puts you back, you get yourself ready and uh, it just, to be quite honest, it's quite tiring. Uh, a bit frustrating, but, you know, these things can't be helped, you know? Well, it's, uh, definitely it's not a very good thing because you get ready, you get switched on, and next thing you have to wait, and the coach is not ready, and all that stuff. And it makes you a little bit more nervous because you just want to get on and do the stuff and get it done. The best way to clear the mind? Well, a taxi tour of downtown Anaheim. Since I started doing this show, I like people to enjoy the show. I like to take it seriously, but I like to have a fun and make it entertaining. Just get on with it, do it, and the best is always win. When I find out I'm going to compete against through Maya Pusinovs, Yanni Vermit, and Boris, and all those guys, Davy Osland, and I thought, well, it's going to be great for me because I can stand myself and just see where I stand against those guys. And I'll be happy if I go through to the final because I um, would stand a very good chance to do third or fourth or all. It's a dream come true, you know. Uh, it's uh, absolutely fabulous to be here and uh, I just can't believe it. I, I need to pinch myself and wake up, you know. I think for the world's strongest man, you have to push yourself beyond your limits, you know. Most events are really uh, against the clock, you know how fast you can move, and there's some really athletic guys, and that's the only concern I have right now. Thank you. Tour over, and time to concentrate once more on the task at hand. Finally, the athletes were on their way. Internationally known as Surf City, 
Huntington Beach boasts eight miles of golden sand, the largest stretch of uninterrupted beachfront on the west coast. Over 11 million visitors flock to the city during the summer, on weekends, and for special events. And the athletes were hoping to attract the locals' attention as the battle continued to find the world's strongest man. England's best hopes lay with the gentle giant, Terry Hollands. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Britain's strongest man, the 2007 Terry Holland. I said when I won the Britons, that was that was my first target to win the Britons, and obviously the second goal I've got is to win the Worlds. I mean, so it was just like, yeah, all right, that's the first one done. Now we will move on to the next one. I mean, obviously I was really chuffed, but to be honest, I've set my goals much higher than that, and I don't want to just be the best in Britain. I want to be the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen. The 30 stone ex rugby playing Hollands used to fit security doors for a living, but he always had a fondness for strongman. I always loved watching it on the telly and really enjoyed it as a sport. And I, I, I talked about it for a long time. I was getting bored with playing rugby, and this just seemed like a sort of a natural progression for me, really. And um, Carly, my girlfriend, suggested that I should have a go, entered me into a competition, came home from work that day and told me. Oh yeah, I've entered you in your first competition. It's in a couple of weeks' time, and I just went for it, and it all went from there, really. Well, Strongest Man is very much a family-friendly competition. Wives, girlfriends, and friends are all welcome to travel with the athletes, but it's not all glamour for these wags. We used to have a good social life. Now it's 100% dedicated to training, eating good food, and um, probably watching every DVD of every past World's Strongest Man a hundred times each week. Some Saturday nights we now sit there for eight and a half hours watching every technical aspect and stuff, so I'm learning quite a lot as well. <laughs> I'll be better next year when I get this gym filling. I love so much more time. That's, that's exactly because I'm sort of yeah. training with Boris and that, I'm a lot more clued up on what I need to be doing now. Well, support for you coming to me. I only got married two weeks ago, and here I am, World's Strongest Man as my honeymoon. So, is that supportive enough? Come on! Come on, Darren! Come on! Obviously, I'm just making a gradual progression. I just looked at where I went wrong. I felt, felt like my preparation wasn't quite right last year. I competed way too much before the world. Maybe my, my, my overhead press, I had a bit of a weakness there and a couple of other event, events, I wasn't quite up to scratch. But, I mean, it's, it's all just a learning thing. The, the more you go along, the more experience you get. And um, I'm, I'm obviously picking things up all the time, but I'm, I'm getting closer to the finished article now. The Hilton Anaheim was home to the athletes for the competition and the hotel took full advantage of the opportunity to remind young people of the importance of staying fit and eating a healthy diet. 150 children from Anaheim's Danbrook Elementary School got the chance to meet their heroes face to face. It was a chance for the children to meet the athletes who explained the importance of exercise and fitness. So all of you guys have dreams, right? The number one thing that you guys have to do in order to achieve your goals is to stay dedicated. Well, we're really delighted to bring the youth of Anaheim uh, together with these world's strongest men and athletes uh, to talk about healthy foods uh, and exercise and healthy lifestyles. Our goal today is really, by having this event here, is that these young kids of America and Anaheim uh, learn how to live a health healthy lifestyle. Everyone then dined on a healthy barbecue lunch, free of burgers, hot dogs and fries. 
then it was time to have some fun with the strongmen. Born in Grenada and a British citizen since January 2007, Mark Felix likes to be surrounded by his family at these contests. But the dedication needed to be a top strongman means sacrifice for all. It's very tough, you know, but, you know, they understand, you know. Um, I feel a lot of attention, you know, but it's something that I have to do, you know, because I gotta stay fit, I gotta stay healthy, gotta stay strong, and also, you know, keep them happy as well. She always there with me. She always um, giving me advice. I mean, even coming to events, both of us sit down together and we go through the events together. You know, if I'm making a mistake and then she might spot it out. I mean, sometimes I wouldn't, but she will. You know, she's she's very dedicated. She's um, she's very helpful. Not younger guys that come in and just start rushing it too much and they get they get themselves injured or always have a problem with the knees, the ankles and us sauce, you know. But me, I could just get up every day off the bed without any aches or pain whatsoever. I never have any no problems, like physical problems, anything like that, you know. Well, I learned a lot from last year's event. Um, I think about it more, I practice a lot more, and I just doesn't get as stressed as I used to. I think a lot more about the events, and more mental and physically, I'm a lot more stronger. In the last 30 years, the US, England, and Iceland can all boast multiple winners. But today, the balance of power has shifted to Eastern Europe, and the man to beat is Poland's Pudzianowski. What makes the three times champion so dominant? Trudno na to pytanie odpowiedzieć. Na to pytanie musieliby odpowiedzieć inni moi znajomi, którzy mnie znają. Trudno jest mówić o sobie. A jakim jestem na pewno zwariowanym i upartym. Czasami to wada i zaleta. Pudzianowski, a former gym instructor, made his strongman debut eight years ago, aged just 22 and made an immediate impact. At six foot one and 20 stone, he's not the biggest strongman, but he's undoubtedly the best. The only blip on a near perfect record was his defeat to American Phil Fister in the 2006 final. Rok temu przegrałem na własne życzenie. Nie była to nic wina. Byłem dobrze przygotowany, ale podeszłem lekceważąco do przeciwników i to się zemściło. W tym roku jest dziesięciu zawodników i każdego szanuję na równi, więc każdego przeciwnika oceniam jak wroga numer jeden. Nie ma, że jest jeden lepszy, drugi gorszy. Każdy jest równy, a ja walczę z nimi i chcę wygrać. I admire Marius Pujanowski. Uh, the guy's an animal. Yeah! Marius is the one I admire the most, just purely because he's he's the most complete guy here, in my opinion. Marius, of course, is a phenomenal athlete. He's just unbelievable. I've never seen an athlete like that before. It, it's, it's freakish. It's nuts. He almost never finishes outside the top two. You know, he really is a machine. If you don't admire Marius Pujanowski, then you just have a bad attitude and you can't appreciate a good athlete. No! <laughs> przed mistrzostwami świata trzy miesiące przed, nawet do pięciu godzin dziennie mi to zajmuje. I jeżeli chce się wygrywać, chce być się najlepszym, trzeba się po prostu poświęcić tylko jednemu. A ja właśnie to robię. Whilst Marius is seen as today's ultimate strongman, three-time champion Bill Kazmaier is regarded by many as being the strongest man ever. The American from Wisconsin won the coveted crown in successive years, from 1980 to 82.
athletes over the years have developed to be faster. Some are bigger. The ones that don't make it to American football, a lot of times they come out of college and they go right into a job. The ones that we do actually get are better. There's better chemistry, there's better uh, nutrition, there's better training, better implements. When we did it in the day, it was static strength and tests. A lot of power lifters, shot putters, football players, and the event really has evolved and changed. I think in the past, you know, they were a little bit more oriented towards brute strength. And, um, you know, certainly it's become a much more technical sport. And as a result, the guys have become more athletic. Compared to the strongmen of Kazmai's era, the athletes of today are faced with far more varied tests of strength, encompassing speed, agility and endurance. entertainment our sport it's, it's purely for for people to watch for enjoyment I mean yeah, it's great for us to stand there and I lifted this and I lifted that but for, for the average person I, I'm not necessarily sure that's that's the right way to go it's perhaps more enjoyable if you've got two guys that are really close running neck side by side when they when the weights get that much heavier it's much slower and maybe you, you might get a guy only carrying something 15 meters as opposed to the full 50 he's supposed to it's, it's I don't know, I think it, is, it has to be enjoy, enjoyable to watch as well. If you make a contest where everything is just five seconds really, really heavy, we know the guy that win it, will win it will weigh around 200 kilos and he will be extremely strong for five seconds. But we don't know if he can run or if he can jump or if he can do anything else. So I think, uh, I mean, I, I think Marius is a good example of uh, how, how a good strongman should be. He can do whatever you ask him to. If you ask him to, you know, take a bike and bicycle for two hours, he will do that. And if you ask him to pull a massive deadlift, he will do that. Because he has a pretty complete physique. That's what a strongman is all about. Created in 1977 by American Barry Frank, the world's strongest man has become the foremost event in strength athletics. For 30 years, the strongest men on the planet have come together for a series of unique and amazing tests of strength. fortunate in that we had Lou Ferrigno in our first event. Lou, of course, was the Incredible Hulk, which many people forget, but it gave us a, uh, an opportunity to get some good publicity. The first rating was terrific, and it just grew from there. Bruce Wilhelm became the first person to earn the title of the World's Strongest Man. The next 29 years saw legendary figures like Kazmaier, Sigmarsson, Ver Magnussen, and Pudzianowski winning multiple titles. But in this anniversary year, what of the future? A lot of lifting sports have dreamt of going to the Olympic Games. But strongman is simply that. It's going to be flipping cars, carrying cars, carrying the world on your back, rocks, farmer's walk, deadlift, squat. Where is it going to go? The sky's the limit. And sometimes the sky's just open. Things don't always exactly go to plan at the world's strongest man. The world's most beautiful sunny locations can be battered by rain and wind. Sometimes filming permits can upset the best laid plans. And despite the weather, the game still had to go on. Picking up the back end of the two-ton car was a tricky task for all, but for assistant referee Jimmy Pollock, the vehicle had a few extra special tricks up its sleeve. The film crew wanted a, a shot of the engine running in the car, so started up the car, sprung the bonnet, opened the bonnet up for them and locked it in position, and we just shut the door because it was in their way. And as soon as we shut the door, the locks bounced down and locked the keys in the car with the engine still running. Still a light tube, so you know, <laughs> but these things happen, and the helpful police got it over for us. Such incidents provide a welcome relief from the pressure generated by intense competition. By the time of the final qualifying rounds, that tension is all too apparent. 
You can feel it, you can touch it now. It's so hard for them now, you know? But for the guys who already are halfway on the plane home, you're gonna see like a half in, like, you know, they're not gonna give it their all. But for the guys who are fighting for a place in the final, they're gonna give it 100%. I do believe, you know, if I, if I stay right mentally and, you know, have a good attitude and, um, you know, just compete like I've trained and, and compete like I know I can, I think I have a good shot at making it through. was very close, um, 92 was very good also, of course last year when Phil won that was you know, a great comeback and it came down to the last event. I really like kind of the drama. Na dzień dzisiejszy mój plan to jest wygrać w tym roku, ale ogólnie moje marzenie jest zostać pięć razy mistrzem świata, gdzie komu jeszcze, nikomu się to jeszcze nie udało. A jest to w zasięgu, ale jest to bardzo, bardzo ciężka praca. Będzie bardzo ciężko to zrobić, ale ja stawiam sobie, że nie ma rzeczy niemożliwych. You got five guys in there that are all capable of, of producing a good performance here. I think with the events here, you know, it's, it's, it can, can only take one mistake on one event, and that's that's you out of the running, basically. I think. It's, um, it's, it's an interesting group. It's, I'd, I'd love to watch it. Obviously, I'm going to be part of it, but I'd like to watch it afterwards because I think it's going to really, really be a close battle. I think it should be good. Yeah.